Cricket essentially boils down to this. You see a ball, you hit a ball. One of the, the common uh, conceptions is that cricket is a sport that lasts five days. And while that's true, and I'd love to stop working for five days, it's only the top 10 teams in the world that play for five days. For the rest of the world, for club cricket, generally it's a game played over six to eight hours. You have 11 players a side. The objective is to score more points than the other team. So you have two innings, one per team. One team smashes maybe 200, 300 runs. Other team tries to chase it down. Playing surface is very important to cricket. So here, obviously the grass is long, but in a proper cricket field, the grass has got to be maximum one inch long because you're trying to hit the ball along the ground. The moment it's over an inch, you're struggling if you're a beginner, you're struggling if you're a kid. The center of the pitch is the most important. We have a strip which is 66 feet or 22 yards long. That is where the ball bounces before it reaches the batsman. It has to be like a road. It has to be very compacted. That's called the wicket. Now to make this really confusing for viewers, the yellow sticks you see are also called the wickets. If you get a batsman out, that is also called the wicket. There's only one word to learn. It can't be that hard. Cricket is broken down into sets which are called overs. And an over is six balls bowled in one direction by the bowler. At the end of that, the field turns around and another bowler bowls six balls in the other direction. Everybody on the team can bowl, right? So it doesn't just have to be one pitcher like in baseball. But unlike baseball, you don't have to just hit it in the sort of triangle. In cricket, you can play 360 degrees. The way you score runs is by exchanging with the other batsman. That's one run. So you have two batsmen standing at all times. And the ways to get out, if you hit the ball in the air and somebody catches it, you're out. Even if you get the slightest touch of the bat on the ball and the wicketkeeper catches it behind, you're out. If it touches your glove, you're out. If you hit the ball and as you're running, someone gets the ball and throws it and knocks over the wicket, you're out. You can be out by being bowled out, which is when the bowler bowls the ball, you miss it, and it goes through and knocks down the wicket. Another way to be out, which is more uh, technical, is called LBW, which is leg before wicket. Basically, that means you're not allowed to stop the ball from hitting the wicket with your body. If the umpire decides that the way the ball was going would have hit the wicket if the batsman hadn't stopped it with his body, the batsman's out. Oh, I remembered another way of being out. Uh, you can be what's called stumped. You've got a crease on the ground. You always have to have one foot either on or behind that crease. If the ball comes towards you and you step forward from your crease to try to hit the ball and miss the ball, the wicket keeper can catch the ball and knock the wicket off before you put your foot behind the crease. It's like being run out. 